Hello, I'm not Chuck, and no, that's not my picture. Okay, it's a little clickbaity, but the subject is real. Vampire power is the same thing that some people call a phantom load or ghost power or similar names. It refers to the relatively small amounts of electricity consumed by electronics, usually in the standby mode. Now, individually, they're pretty small, but If you looked at them collectively, they might be pretty significant, especially if you're living in a van or an RV on battery power. So in this video, we'll take a look at various devices to see how much power they really draw, if any. And for fun, we'll do it like a little quiz to see how well you know RV power consumption. I'll take you through my travel trailer and look at some of the equipment in it, And you can decide if and how much electricity that equipment draws. It's easy. Okay, here we go with our little quiz. Remember, your objective is to identify as many things as possible that you believe are drawing power from the battery. It doesn't matter how much or how little power you think it's drawing. If you think it's drawing any power at all, it counts. Now remember, we're talking about power from the battery and only from the battery. So here we go. We're going to start with the bedroom. Not that there's very much to it. It's just a full-size bed. Um, At this end, there is a light on the ceiling. There's an AC outlet in the corner. On the other end, There's another AC outlet in the corner and another light on the ceiling. I believe that's all there is in the bedroom. Let's move on to the bathroom. If you thought the bedroom was small, wait till you see the bathroom. All right, in the bathroom, there's a shower and a little tiny tub. And above the tub, there is a skylight. In addition to the skylight, there's a small light on the ceiling, and there's also a fantastic fan. I think that's all that's in here. I don't see anything else. So let's move back into the hallway. And here we have the thermostat for the furnace. Under the bottom is the temperature setting. And on the top is the on-off switch. Remember, that's just the thermostat. The furnace itself is on this side of the room. And there it is. The fan's not running. Just above the furnace, there's a two burner cooktop. It's propane gas. Above the cooktop is a range hood. Looks like it has provision for a fan and a light. Above the range hood is a microwave oven. To the right of that we see a light under the counter and the monitor for the three tanks, that is the freshwater tank, the black tank, and the gray tank. It also monitors the batteries has a switch there for the water pump. Looks like the switch is on. Below that there's an AC outlet. Looks like there's a charger plugged into the AC outlet. If we follow that around we see it's connected to a cell phone. Ooh, Looks like the cell phone is working. 1.33 p.m. on Wednesday, May 30th. 
Then on the wall, next to the AC outlet, there's a connection point for uh, the TV antenna, which is up on the roof. That's where the antenna wire is connected. There's an amplifier in the antenna. Just above that is a 12 volt outlet, cigarette lighter style. Nothing plugged in, but for the purpose of the quiz, I'm going to plug this in. Pretend that that was plugged in the whole time. I didn't have it plugged in because I wanted you to be able to see the antenna connection. And we'll point out to you that it is connected to a small, cheap inverter. And looks like the inverter is off. All right, if we move around, turn around, I should say, we see on this side a radio. It's turned off. I'll turn it on, but for the purpose of this uh, quiz, you can pretend that it was off the whole time. I just want you to see what it looks like when it's lit up. All right, and I'll turn it back off. So now the radio's off. Next to the radio is an air conditioner. Below the air conditioner is a Norcold refrigerator. Look at the controls on that. That's the igniter push button. That's the indicator that tells you whether or not the gas is lit. That's the safety switch. That's the thermostat. And that's the selector where you select either battery power, AC power, propane, or off. And the last thing we want to look at is down here under the seating spot. That's the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. All right, that's it. Now, remember, you're looking for everything that you saw that you believe is drawing power from the house battery on the travel trailer. I'll give you a chance to work on that. In the bedroom area, there were two AC receptacles, but, of course, they don't have anything to do with the batteries in the coach, unless, of course, you have an external inverter, which I do not. In addition, there were two lights on the ceiling, which would run off DC and would drain the batteries, except neither one of them was turned on. So, the battery drain in the bedroom was zero. In the bathroom, there was a ceiling light, which uh, operates off DC, but it wasn't turned on. There was also a skylight, which uses sunlight and doesn't take any power whatsoever, but there was a fan running. It's a fantastic fan. It was running on low speed, and at that speed, I measured it drawing 1.308 amperes. The furnace in the travel trailer runs on propane, and so that doesn't require any DC power. The thermostat doesn't take any DC power. However, if the furnace had been running, that would mean that the fan was running. I noted in the video that it was not running, but if it had been running, it would have been drawing a whopping 3.4 amperes of power. It really draws a lot of power when it runs. The cooktop runs on propane and is lit by using a, a lighter or a match. It never uses any electricity, either AC or DC, so there's no drain on the house battery. There were two items in the 
range hood, which might have drawn power. One was a fan, an exhaust fan, but it wasn't running. However, as you can see, the light in the range hood was running. In this case, this light is equipped with an incandescent bulb. Pretty old-fashioned and pretty wasteful. It draws 1.370 amps while it's on. I really need to change that out to an LED. The microwave oven is an AC device and draws no power whatsoever from the batteries. The under cabinet light is an array of LEDs which, if it was on, would draw 0.220 amps from the house battery. But since it's not on, it doesn't draw any power whatsoever. What's interesting to note here is that this LED is brighter than the light in the range hood, but uses only one-sixth the power. You should have noticed that the monitor panel had the switch that controls the water pump lit. That indicates that the switch is on and the pump is ready to run. The LED that's inside the switch draws very little current, only 0 .010 amps. Now, if the pump had been actually running, it draws a huge amount of current, 4.894 amps. It's a big power hog in your RV. This one is a little bit tricky because the cell phone clearly is working and is getting power from somewhere and we know it's plugged into a charger which is plugged into an AC receptacle on the travel trailer. So you might have thought, well, the cell phone is running off the house battery. That's not the case because the house battery does not provide power to the AC receptacles. The cell phone is running on its own internal battery. The tip-off here is the tiny green LED that you see lit in the photograph. You'll notice that it's next to the power on switch, and it indicates that power is being provided to the amplifier, which I told you is in the antenna. Now, together, the LED and the amplifier draw a total of 0 0.078 amps. Not a huge draw, but enough to be careful about. You might be surprised to know that this particular inverter draws a tiny amount of current when it's plugged in even though it's turned off. That's simply the standby circuitry ready to go once the power switch is operated. It's a tiny amount of power and really doesn't amount to anything. However, you might be interested to know that if I turn the inverter on with no load connected to it, it would draw approximately one half of an ampere. That would be 0.453 amps. And if I connected my 19 inch TV to it and turned it on, I would be drawing about 1.635 amps. So once you connect that TV, it does draw significant power. Here's another device that draws power even when it's off. You'll notice the blue LED is lit. That indicates that there's going to be some current drain, probably on the order of 0 0.010 amps. But that's not the case because there's even more circuitry that is working inside the radio even when it's turned off, bringing the total of the LED and the circuitry with the radio off to 0 0.072 amps. Enough to worry about. The air conditioner is another device like the microwave oven. It's an AC only device and draws no power whatsoever from the house batteries. I hope you notice that the refrigerator is set to run on propane. That's the switch on the far right side of the control panel. In that situation, it does not use any house battery current whatsoever. That's very different from when you have it set to run on DC. In fact, on DC, the refrigerator will very likely be the biggest drain you can possibly put on your house battery. In that case, it draws a whopping 10.7 amps. The carbon monoxide and propane detector does run off the house battery. Between the LED and the circuitry involved, it draws 0 0.062 amperes. Well, how did you do on the quiz? Your score really isn't that important to me. What's important to me is whether or not I've helped you to better understand power usage in your van or RV and to manage that usage. 
I have created a PDF of the actual measurements that I took in the preparation of this video, and a link to that PDF is in the video description below. That's it for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most of all, don't forget, I'm not Chuck.